playing Grand Theft Auto on the Switch. Beep, 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 beep. Get out of the way. We've got a weekly roundup coming through. We've got Grand Theft Auto finally coming to the Switch. I'm so excited. We also have possible screen burn on the new Nintendo Switch OLED. Not looking good. Best of all, I bought a sword. That's right, I bought a Master Sword replica and I'm going to be unboxing it in this video. I'm so excited to share with you and maybe slice some things. All right, friends, it's been about a week since the Indie Direct and I am so excited to share this new game that I'm playing. It's called Boyfriend Dungeon. I originally talked about it in an earlier episode just because it was so freaking weird, <laughs> the announcement, but I was intrigued and I am happy to say it's actually kind of fun and I think you guys should check it out. Something that's really thoughtful about this game is the way it begins. It has a lot of trigger warnings for you. There has a warning about how there's a character that texts you honestly, too much, uh, <laughs> named mom and they are like, are you comfortable with mom? If not, you can turn that off, which was a really thoughtful option that a lot of people wish that Animal Crossing had. So I thought it was really cool that they included it for this game. There is also a chance to put in your pronouns, which is amazing, as well as the fact that they give you a warning ahead of time that there's going to be like stalker situations and things like that just to kind of give you a heads up ahead of time. Although I will say it has made me so paranoid. Like every time we've gone on like an air quotes, like date with one of these swords. If he's like a little weird, I'm like, oh no, that's the stalker. We have to ghost him. It's super fun. There's lots of really interesting characters to date and swords. It's not just a regular dating sim. It actually has like a whole dungeon aspect to it where it has actually really challenging levels. I was kind of expecting them to be really easy, but I have died multiple times playing with these dungeons. It's actually really fun. And also kind of, it gives me Celeste vibes, where it's very introspective about your fears. So in this dungeon, you are fighting your characters like insecurities. So at the beginning, it's like these weird monsters, but as they explain it to you, you go through different insecurities. So I finished the first dungeon and the first dungeon, it was all based around like fear of change. So at the end, you kind of come out like unafraid of change. Um, and so I'm really excited to see what dungeon two is. But yeah, it just has that, again, that really awesome introspective feel that Celeste had. Plus also, again, a dating sim. I do think it's, I'm still not fully wrapped my head around the concept that you're dating swords. This game is a lot and it's a lot of fun and I would definitely recommend. It's only $20 too, so there's no reason to not check it out. Check it out and let me know in the comments what you think. Xbox Game Pass is coming to the Nintendo Switch OLED? Well, if Phil Spencer had anything to say about it, the answer would be yes. As we already know from the previous Epic Games email leak, Phil Spencer has been sliding into everybody's DMs trying to make Game Pass a thing. Stop trying to make Game Pass a thing, Phil Spencer. It's never gonna happen. Although I really do hope it does happen. Let me just put that out there. I think it's a great idea. If you don't know what the idea of Game Pass is, Phil Spencer has come up with this concept that he no longer wants Xbox to be tied to a console, but rather be a streaming service so that you don't have to have an Xbox console to be able to play Xbox games. The idea is that even with, say, on your Switch OLED, you could play any of the accessible Xbox games. You don't need the newest Xbox to play whatever the newest Xbox releases. I think this would really open things up for casual gamers and just overall accessibility to games. And I think it's so hard just <laughs> having to have all these different consoles because one, it's expensive because you not only have to buy a console, but also the game. Is Xbox Game Pass coming to the Switch? In a recent interview with Game Radar, Phil Spencer said, quote, you know, evolution always takes time. There are different strengths that different companies have built through hard work, and some of these changes they might see as disruptive, and they'll have their own kind of business cadence and pace at which they want to make those changes. To me, that says he's ready for it, but Nintendo just isn't quite there yet. I will say though, Nintendo and Microsoft have had a long list of collaborations. So I think if any service 
Xbox is probably the most likely for Nintendo to kind of be buddy-buddy with. I think it would take a long time for, say, Nintendo to put any PlayStation, like, app on their console. I don't think we would see that anytime soon. But Xbox, they've already had a lot of collaborations with, so there are already those friendly waters. This would also give Nintendo a competitive edge against Steam and the Steam Deck, because the Steam Deck has this huge accessibility to so many games and Nintendo currently, we are getting some games from other consoles now, but having something like the Game Pass is going to completely change the game as far as accessibility for Nintendo. I don't see Nintendo ever in the future saying, hey PlayStation, let's put an app on you where people can play Nintendo games. I do not see Nintendo doing that at all. But I think if you are going to put your foot down and say, hey, we are the only ones to have exclusive content, you need to be open to having other people's content because otherwise you are offering a limited library compared to other people who have way more open capabilities. The other thing that I could see Nintendo maybe not wanting to do is I could see troubles arising just because the Switch, due to the fact that they have handheld features, they are a less powerful console for sure, so there may be games that don't run as well as they would on the Xbox on the Switch, and I could see them being worried about people being upset because of that. Either way, I think it's a great opportunity, and fingers crossed that Phil Spencer can make Game Pass a thing. Ah, shoot. Here we go again. Grand Theft Auto rumors are once again swirling, but I think this time we can actually hold stock of them. I am saying it with my whole chest, a Grand Theft Auto trilogy is coming to the Switch OLED. Kotaku has had multiple sources coming to them saying that a trilogy of Grand Theft Auto games is coming by October possibly, and I am so excited. I truly have never sweat more than when I play a Grand Theft Auto game. I don't know what, I just, it makes me so sweaty. And like, I'm one of those people that like, is lame and would follow the rules of Grand Theft Auto, except I'm such a bad driver, I always end up accidentally breaking the law and getting chased by the cops. So which games can we expect on this trilogy? So far, people think it's Grand Theft Auto 3, which takes place in Liberty City, which is New York. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Vice, which takes place in Miami and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which takes place in multiple cities, takes place in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Las Vegas. Gamers can expect a mix of new and old graphics? That makes me a little nervous. <laughs> because when I hear that, I think instantly of Star Wars, and when they remastered like the original Star Wars and you just have like random CGI characters. I would say if you have those original versions of Grand Theft Auto, you know, maybe keep them in a safe place. They might be worth a lot of money someday, especially if they're unopened. Do not open your original versions of Grand Theft Auto if they are still closed. I could be making you a millionaire, who knows? Leakers have shared that the game was originally supposed to come out earlier, but uh, some unforeseen circumstances delayed coming out. We can expect to see it though late October, early November, which is perfect for when the OLED comes out. Like this is just the perfect storm and I am so excited. Rumors have also been swirling that it's not just the remasters that the Grand Theft Auto team has been tinkering with, but that new content for Grand Theft Auto 5 may be coming soon. So if you're wondering why this is such a big deal, this is like the first huge Nintendo Grand Theft Auto release. They had one other Grand Theft Auto game, but it was on the DS. I am so excited to be able to play with Joy-Cons. <gasps> Do we think it'll be kind of like Mario Kart controllers where you may be able to like turn the wheel? I'm so excited. Okay, I'm probably building this up more than it actually will be, but can you imagine? I would actually maybe be good at driving then. <laughs> Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure, I will be seeing you behind the wheel very soon in Grand Theft Auto, and you better watch out because I am never good at braking in that game. I don't wanna die! Oh. The new Nintendo Switch has OLED burn? Our biggest fears come to life. One of the biggest worries for a lot of people about the Nintendo Switch OLED is experiencing screen burn. And we all know Nintendo was so weird about Joy-Con drift. We can only imagine what it would be like if a lot of us start experiencing screen burn with the new OLED. I see a lot of gaslighting in our future. 
but never fear because there are a couple things that after research made me feel a lot better about possible screen burn for the OLED. First thing was that OLED technology has developed so much more than when it was first created. Obviously, when it was first coming out, a lot of people were experiencing screen burn on their TVs, but thankfully the fact that OLED has been used now for phone screens and laptops and so much more, people are experiencing burn less and less because there are a lot of precautions being put in place now that developers know what to look out for. That being said, one of the biggest causes for screen burn are when things are left on screen for hours, which you may think, well, a video game's moving fast. There's not gonna be anything on screen for hours. How Ever, when you think about big games that are coming out like Breath of the Wild 2 that do have different life meters, you have your hearts off in the corner and those stay in the same place the entire game. It does bring up questions of, do I have something to worry about? Nintendo does have two fail-safe measures in place though to prevent screen burn with the OLED screen. One is an auto brightness feature that will adjust the brightness so the screen doesn't get too bright to kind of help with that burnout. And the second one is an auto sleep function, which puts the device in a auto sleep mode for short periods of time, again, to kind of help prevent that screen burn, especially when you've been playing in handheld mode for a really long time. Also, let's be real, a lot of us are going to be playing Breath of the Wild 2 on the big TV screen instead of the handheld mode, although I'm sure with the new OLED screen, it's gonna look beautiful. Also something to think about too is Nintendo always designs their games with the new console in mind. So it wouldn't really make sense for them to design Breath of the Wild 2 thinking of the OLED and having those stagnant elements. So maybe for the first time we'll see the Zelda hearts moving around or different things. All I know is Nintendo, fingers crossed, knock on wood, has got our backs, at least for now, and hopefully if there is a major problem with screen burn, they'll do what they did with the Joy-Cons where you can send your Switch in for free to get fixed. All right, everybody, it's sword time! <laughs> so just like everybody else, I've been playing through Skyward Sword, and of course I've been seeing the Master Sword, and when I saw this targeted ad on Amazon for a Master Sword, I needed no convincing. I bought it. <laughs> I'm so excited. I've been waiting to open it with you. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the box. It's huge. Oh, it's beautiful. <gasps> this is gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to take it out of the... This looks so good. I'm so excited. Look at the detail. This is amazing. I'm so ex This is, looks so good. And there's detail. This is like actual leather here. And this is metal. It is weighty. I think I can actually cut stuff with this. I'm so excited. This thing is like taller than me when I'm sitting down. And I have my hair at its highest height right now. Like my head is like actually here, you know? I'm like adding like a couple inches. This actually feels comfortable. Should we unsheath it? I'm scared. I've never owned a sword before. Who let me do this? <laughs> also, I really like that um, my sword on the like address that it came from, it just says sharp knives. <laughs> Honestly, I probably should have watched some like sword safety videos because I'm scared of cutting myself just taking this thing out right now. All right, full blade reveal. <gasps> oh. This looks so good. It's got like a little bit of, cause it has some oil on it. So it looks like it just has a little bit of like residual stuff on it, but that can be easily cleaned off. It looks so good. There's even writing like inside of the blade. It also has a message on the blade in Helion, which I am so excited to translate. I'll have to keep you guys updated next week and let you know what it says. Um, but for now, be sure to keep an eye on our socials. I'm going to be slicing things with the sword, so make sure you're following us to go check it out. And before we go, if you wanna buy yourself the exact same sword, we're going to have a link in the description for you. Hey everyone, subscribe or else. <laughs> I got it. Hey everyone, subscribe or else. <laughs>